A significant ice storm is currently impacting the southeast where many areas along the southeast already have experienced over a half of an inch of ice and this is expected to continue into tomorrow as well where we could see very dangerous road conditions as a result and of course we also have a major arctic blast that's expected to impact the eastern half of the united states where many areas could experience temperatures well below zero first let's take a look at the current radar and we do see a large area of freezing rain going on anywhere between memphis and all the way as far west as lubbock texas where we do see a very large area of freezing rain and it is expected to continue all throughout tonight the temperature along the surface is below freezing and we're seeing just enough of a warm air intrusion as a result of a southwesterly flow we're seeing just to the east of this old pressure system and that as a result it, we're seeing just enough of um uh, the pattern to develop for a major freezing rain threat to occur um right now in the southeast where uh, Little Rock is getting involved with some freezing rain. Um, Dallas is right in between experiencing some sleet and freezing rain at this time. Many areas are throughout Texas have already experienced well over a quarter of an inch of ice and this expected to continue into Thursday morning. In terms of what the European model is forecasting when it comes to ice accumulation over the next several hours, we do see that we're going to continuously see an enhanced area of convection throughout Texas, southern Oklahoma, and into Arkansas as well, where we're going to see this continue into Thursday morning and moving forward. This even continues for Arkansas into Thursday afternoon by midday, where we eventually will see that freezing rain um, continue into Tennessee as well, before eventually, as we approach the Thursday evening time frame that's when we'll begin to see temperatures warm up and the convection move far south enough to where it won't encounter the freezing the freezing temperatures that are along the surface so as well this will primarily be a rain event for the immediate southeast where Mississippi Alabama and Louisiana are not expected to receive any snowfall from this as it seems like temperature is just a little bit too warm for that and we do have a ridge that's going to be just to the east I mean just to the west of this old pressure system so Temperatures should eventually rebound over the freezing point for much of Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. So the good news is that the ice we're seeing tonight and into, and that's where we're expected to see into early tomorrow, will eventually melt and the, the road conditions will improve drastically as a result, which is certainly good news. So over the next 12 hours, however, you still need to pay close attention to the high risk of freezing rain as the road conditions will be very dangerous. And I emphasize that many of these areas not to go outdoors um, under conditions like this because it only takes around a tenth of an inch to a, a quarter of an inch of ice to cause major issues along the roadway. So you want to pay very close attention to that and make sure not to go out unless it's an extreme emergency. Unfortunately, we have seen um, we have seen a lot of accidents throughout the southeast over the past several days as a result of this ice and it'll be best to avoid the roads if you could throughout the southeast as a result of the freezing rain we're expected to see over the next 12 hours but eventually this soul pressure system will move eastward and moving forward we also see that there's going to be a clipper system that's going to move just north of the United States Canadian border where we're going to see some snow showers associated with it as well where portions of the interior northeast might experience some isolated snow showers i wouldn't really count on this bringing much snowfall at all maybe an inch if you're lucky if you're into the snow but other than that the snow showers will primarily be very light but what's important about this clipper system is that it's going to bring a very strong northwesterly flow for the temperatures to drop well below zero in many of these areas in the northern midwest as well as the northern northeast where i'd say friday night into pretty much the entirety of saturday and into saturday night temperatures will be much colder than average and we're seeing a strong pressure gradient between this low pressure system and this ridge located in the midwest for a strong northerly flow to occur for temperatures to be well below average as we approach the weekend so if you are planning to go out this weekend it's going to be very cold make sure to bundle up because um, you'll easily get just very very cold within minutes of going outside so you want to pay very close attention to that into the weekend um, because it's going to be very cold and much colder than what you've been experiencing over the past several months where of course the past several weeks and even months has have been much warmer than average for the most part for much 
of the Northeast, but this is expected to change as we approach the weekend. But the good news is that this won't necessarily last very long because this slow pressure system will move well um, further to the east and as Zota strong northerly winds will move away re relatively quickly so by Sunday we should see temperatures rebound back closer to average as result of this ridge that's going to be just to the east of this um, of the east coast which will allow the southwesterly winds to pretty much take hold of the east coast and raise up the temperatures as a result which is certainly good news now let's take a look at the forecast of temperatures from the European model Taking a look at the forecasted temperatures over the next several hours, we do see that much of Texas is expected to experience temperatures that are well below freezing, which will only add on to the freezing rain you've been experiencing over the past several days. And these freezing temperatures move as far south as southern Texas and even come close to the Texas Mexico border. So the freezing rain threat could move a lot further southward than you think for much of Texas. And Arkansas and Tennessee are also getting involved with below freezing temperatures and moving into the northeast we do see temperatures for, for the most part are hovering around average it's that's expected to continue into thursday but of course we see the purple it's quickly move far south enough to where we're going to see temperatures much colder than average especially as we approach friday night moving into the daytime on friday into the later daytime on friday we see a temperature reading of 14 in boston around the low 20s in new york city which is around 15 degrees below average for that portion of the day and we do see temperatures in the negatives close to the minneapolis area and then temperatures in the negatives as, as well for the interior northeast and moving forward into um, midnight on saturday we do see that the temperature is hovering around one in boston which is which are temperatures of course well below average and then we see a temperature reading forecasted from the european model of negative nine around the boston area which is extreme extremely cold and then we see a temperature reading near negative on um, the negative teens around Albany um, and then a temperature reading that could go down to single digits in New York City so we want to pay very close attention to that as we approach late on um, the evening time on Friday and moving forward we do see temperatures still remain cold throughout the a large portion of the northeast um, um, and we do see that temperatures eventually begin to rebound throughout the Midwest as like I said the temperature the these cold temperatures shouldn't last long which is certainly good news but you want to at least be aware of this as we approach the weekend and the gfs model is fairly certain with this forecast as well take a look at the total ice accumulation forecast we do see that there's a large area that still could experience up to a half of an inch of ice on top of what you've already experienced over the past few days in texas oklahoma and arkansas so there's still that high risk of very heavy ice um, going into tonight and into early tomorrow so for your thursday morning commute you want to still pay very close attention to the to the major ice accumulation we're gonna see see um into the morning time for your morning commute in terms of anything else we're taking a look at for the more long-term future so as of right now it seems like it's going to be fairly quiet for at least the more long-term future where after this ice storm and of course this arctic blast moving through the eastern half of the united states much of the united states will remain dry we will see some snow showers in the higher elevations of the cascade mountains but that isn't anything that's unusual for this time of the year and moving forward we do see very quiet conditions temperatures should remain around average to slightly above average for most of the country as well of a big ridge that's dominating we will see clippers move just north of the united states borders um but they won't bring much snow at all to um even the canadian regions because the clipper systems are so weak and moving forward into next week where there's going to be another clipper system that's starting to move through but as of right now it seems like this will be just another rain vent and um we might need to pay close attention to this um low pressure system that's expected to develop into the middle part of next week where we could see an enhanced risk of thunder showers and we do see a significant jet stream dip behind this old pressure system so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this storm system as of right now it seems like it wants to bring an all rain event but you might still want to pay close attention to the southeast because that could bring a heavy rain and severe thunderstorm threat associated associated with this instability and behind it we could see a very significant jet stream dip that could maybe set up for our next major snowstorm for
toward northeast of course we've seen a scenario like this dozens of times so far this winter for the northeast so it's still highly uncertain and we still could easily see this forecast um, not come for fruition based on how many times the computer models have shifted away from being so the northeast but it's at least something to be aware of as we approach next week um because this jet stream dip could bring an enhanced risk of instability and snowstorms at least somewhere in the united states so i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days take a look at my forecast when it comes to this major ice storm and of course this arctic blast moving through so major ice is still expected for tonight and into early tomorrow so make sure you take the necessary precautions throughout the southeast and then you should expect temperatures that are well below zero in the interior northeast and the interior portions of the great lakes region where we're gonna see a major arctic blast move through into late friday and into um pretty much lasting until late saturday so you want to stay prepared bundle up this weekend because it's going to be very cold for much of northeast but i uh, thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather-related content